Please welcome Director of Digital Consumer Experience, The Rank Group, Kerry Dawes, and Consultant 120 Feet, Ben Stevenson. Everyone, uh, we have the uh, great opportunity to go after um, Johanna there and after lunch, so I hope you're still all awake after that nice lunch. Um, today we're going to talk about driving the enterprise change with technology and data. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm Kerry Dawes. I work at the Rank Group, which is a, um, the largest multi-channel um, gaming uh, company in the UK and Europe. So we have Mecha Bingo, which some of you might be familiar with, Grosvenor Casinos, and Enracha and Yo Bingo in Spain. Um, we're a, we have lots and lots of data about our customers. We have a high frequency of consum consumers coming back every day. And probably our biggest challenge is competition, um, regulation, and um, bringing all that data into some value statement. Uh, hello, I'm Ben Stevenson. I work for an agency called 120 Feet. We are a specialist in web analytics, tag management, optimization. And we basically try and help you get the most out of your data. Um, we work slightly differently to a lot of other agencies. We like to be on site and embed ourselves deeply within the teams uh, to the level that I'm on stage with Kerry rather than <laughs> being back in the office. So today we're going to talk about bees. You are all at the right conference, I reassure you. You're not at the uh, bee symposium 2019. But just go with us for a minute because there is a relevance between bees and tag management. We do assure you there is something about this. Um, the reason I'm talking about bees is my husband decided in the busy life that we have um, that he's going to become a beekeeper. So over the last 12 months, I've also learned a huge amount about bees. And bizarrely, they are the most fascinating um, creature. And it absolutely sits side by side with what we're all here today to talk about with technology and data. So hopefully you recognize this. This is a, a honeycomb. This is where the bees live. Um, the bees, a swarm of bees will take a home either in a, a man-made structure, which is known as a hive, or in a natural crevice in a tree or um, in, in woods, and that's known as a nest. And the first thing they do is they build this hexagonal structure out of wax, and each of the cells within this structure has a specific purpose. It's either to store food, or it's to store eggs, or it's to store the young as they grow. So this is effectively your IQ, your tag management. This is the structure, this is the stuff that sits right at the bottom. Once this is in place, the swarm will then recruit or breed uh, the right people the right, uh, for the right jobs. So they have drones, they have workers, they have queens, and the swarm knows which of these roles they need and they will bring in the right bees or they'll breed the right bees for that, that job. So there are two main types of, uh, of, of bees. The first ones are the workers. They're the builders. They're the, they're the ones who look after that structure. They keep it clean. They uh, collect the food from the ones who've been out collecting the pollen. They feed the young. They maybe add a Facebook tag here and there. They maybe look after the double-click implementation, that kind of thing. So these are the guys who do the day-to-day -day keeping your business running and keeping the, uh, keeping the, the, the data flowing. And then you have the, uh, the exciting guys. These are the innovators, the explorers. These are the ones who go out and find new pollen sources. So they, uh, they will fly off and they cover several kilometers. They'll find a new flower bed, a new field full of pollen. And then they come back and they basically take the rest of the swarm on that journey. And they say, this is the new pollen source we found. This is what we're going to do with it. They come out, they do a thing called a waggle dance which we're not going we're to demonstrate going to for you. <laughs> but they basically can communicate to the rest of the swarm quite accurately exactly in which direction and how far away this new pollen source is. So they've basically taken the concept of taking the team on a journey. They go and find something new, they come back, they t sell that into the rest of the swarm, and then the whole swarm can carry on. Without the pollen source, of course, the swarm will die. They'll have no food. Without bees, we won't have any food because they pollinate a lot of our food. So it's basically the end of the world. So if nothing else, you've all learned a little bit about bees, which is uh, the main takeaway from today, let's be honest. Um, so we applied this same approach. And actually, when looking back, you know, when, when um, Johanna was talking about looking back and learning from what, where you're going, it, it's exactly the same infrastructure. And we're just going to talk you through how we as a business over the last few years have got there in the kind of stages we've gone through um, between the rank group and with 120 feet. 
because this doesn't happen overnight. You know, honey takes months to be created, as does the kind of place where we've got to, which we're going to talk about later. So um, going back to FY17, I was actually at DV um, that year as well, and we were talking about the, the change we went through. So we got the infrastructure in. We got tag management. We got the data layer in. We kind of started doing audience stream. But basically, we had the real foundation, basic processes, basic governance, and that was our, our foundation for building upon. Uh, we've been teething partners since 2013. We've attended the DVs since then. Um, and we were brought on very early in ranks deployment just from a training point of view. So I went in just for a couple of days. I taught them how Tedium worked, how the, the tag management side worked. Um, and our relationship with Tedium as partners enabled us to bring in some best practices from that very early point. So going on another year, it was very much the year of the waggle dance. So it was about adoption and taking the rest of the business on the journey, which was probably the most important place um, in terms of where we've got to today. So getting adoption of audience stream across our core um, stakeholders and colleagues and marketing, um, getting an event stream, so getting all that rich data and dumping it into our data science team so they can do some, some cool modeling with it. Um, we're also doing a lot of trial and error, a lot of POCs, a lot of things that won, um, worked, a lot of things that didn't. Um, I spoke to a couple of old colleagues um, at lunch, and, and they're all there when we were trying a lot of this stuff. And as I say, it was a lot of work to um, a lot of trial and error, really. Um, and we're also working quite close with Telium at that stage as well to, to drive forward um, Telium for us using the Adobe Campaign co Connector that we helped um, create with them. And. In uh, March last year, we started working more closely with Rank, so we started a, uh, an engagement where I'm now on site with them three days a week. I'm embedded in that team. I'm helping them with the knowledge share, with training, um, with making the most of it. Um, this year has really been about the innovation for us um, and thinking a little bit outside the box. Um, so what we've been focused on, so we have obviously the very traditional um, you know, web-based tag management and all that data, which is great, but we've actually gone into our clubs and managed to get tag management across every screen we can get our hands on. So we have kiosks where people can get the latest promotions in a casino. Tags are on there, so we get all of that data. The Wi-Fi, the app, you know, we've got it through our Salesforce integration, through um, our contact center. So it's really been about getting um, you know, new use case out in the business. And we've also been landing the data in the data lake, um, again, for automation. Um, and we were also the first European um, beta client on Think, so we're looking to get some great results on that. And then continuing our engagement, being in the team three, two to three days a week, means that I'm aware of everything that's going on. So I'm getting involved uh, selling Tedium through the business, talking to the, uh, the IT teams, the BAs, the PMs, um, we've done supply workshops, we've done wireframing, so we're getting, we're talking about getting the Tedium tags into these systems right at the beginning. So the, a, a recent kiosk project, we were right there as they were designing the project, um, making sure that the data was being collected rather than as an, uh, as an afterthought, but the whole thing was based around what we could collect and so what we could report on. And then really just looking forward, um, next year will be a big year for us. So we've built quite a lot of um, capability. It's about how do we use it and stretch it. So what else can we do? Um, we're looking for more automation, more real-time modeling, feeds into our marketing stack, into our on-site personalization. Um, basically, how can we stretch the value out of every single capability that feeds into um, Telium? So what that kind of looks like in, in regards to the view that we have on our customers. So yeah, we know our customer. We've got it across our web. So we've got tag management across all of our websites, as you expect. No new site goes live without it. And we've just gone through a big migration where the tag management was the absolute essential part for go live because it's been the most important part of data to measure success of that project. Um, apps, you know, so getting the same traction across our apps and the same visibility of our customers across any device um, that we're working on. But more interestingly, as I say, we go into the clubs and there's a number of touch points, digital screens, where we've started to understand our customers. So, you know, Wi-Fi data, you know, every time a customer goes on Wi-Fi, we're getting that information. It's another source of information. You know, a lot of our, our, of our clubs, you know, they're open door. People can go in and engage with them. And we want that freedom for our customers. But also, there's a data, a missed data opportunity. So we're trying to plug it in creative new ways. So Wi-Fi was one of them. Um, we have location data, so wherever possible, can we understand where they are and the proximity to our clubs? You know, there is a correlation we found between um, people being near a club and playing online, irrespective if they even go in the club. 
Um, Kios, as I say, you know, it's a totally independent screen. It's a, it's a, a, a small app that sits in there, and it's a totally retail-based product. Um, but we've got Tag in there, and actually, since the launch of it, it's been an instrumental part of the, the um, success of a, our Grosvenor One um, shared account wallet um, to understand how people are engaging with this new capability that Rank have brought on. And then, you know, even moving forward, um, if you go into one of our bingo halls, um, there's one just around the corner, um, you can play bingo online in our devices. And again, getting the tag in there so we can understand how customers are engaging in club in their digital environment there. It's just rich enriching the picture that we have on the customer. And then how we do it, Ben's going to take us through that. So, as you'd expect, Underneath all of this, we have Tedium's Data Hub. That's the core where all the data comes in, whether it's coming in from the websites, from the apps, from the physical locations. Everything comes into Data Hub. We have IQ, we have audience stream, we have uh, event stream, and we also have the, the data access. So the first key thing, and the first thing I worked on, was getting that data back out into the behavior analytics. So we use Adobe Analytics, so hosted through IQ, so all the data is coming out into Adobe, and we are uh, doing all the behavioral stuff that you'd expect, all the KPI reporting, um, all the journeys, all the funnels, everything you'd kind of expect. Then the insights from the analytics is feeding straight into our uh, optimization and personalization program. So using Optimizely, we're running A-B tests, we're running targeting tests, and a lot of these are based around audience stream audiences. So we, again, we're using the real-time feeds coming in, assigning people into audiences, and then targeting them. And of course, that feeds back into the website. The data comes around. They may be, because of what they've just done, they change audience, they move through. So this is a, a circle uh, on the right-hand side as they progress through. We're also using event stream to pull the data out, mangle it around a bit, do a bit of stuff, and put it into the data lake. Uh, the data lake is a, a, a a BI tool, it sits somewhere else, it's pulling data in from the clubs as well, it's pulling the event stream data in, it's combining all that together, and we're using that for almost real-time modeling um, and also business reporting. So we, again, we're pulling that in, combining it with the different, various different things, and sent, sending that out to the business. Um, and finally, um, the marketing. Uh, so we've got email marketing, display marketing, retargeting, all of that, again, is being fed out of audience stream. Those real-time audiences are all uh, being fed out into Adobe Campaign, into DoubleClick, into the various things, and they're driving real-time um, marketing campaigns, which, again, feeds back into the top and then in back through. And finally, uh, we have the data lake and we have other data sources that are also feeding in, so omnichannel imports, things like our VIP list from our clubs, that's all coming in via um, uh, all come back in, into the bottom, which we're then using again to augment the, the profiles and push it all back out again. And, and I think the approach that we've taken on that um, kind of infrastructure that we've built is not focusing on a single customer view. I think that's very 2008, if that's the right year that that was started to talk, be talked about in the industry. What we've focused on is getting the right data in the right channel at the right frequency. So, you know, there's a lot of focus on getting all the data in one place and it lives there, but actually that's not realistic for businesses. Um, you know, we need real-time access to data or as frequently updated as possible for A-B testing on site, but actually business reporting, if that's daily, that's fine. So that's really what we've been trying to focus on is getting the right information at the right frequency that's, that's really needed rather than trying to reach this utopia that is fairly unrealistic, we can all probably guess now. Um, before I go any further, I forgot to say at the beginning, um, we're going to do an open Q&A for about 10 minutes um, once we've finished our slides. So have a think if you've got any questions. When I spoke with the team presenting, we, we didn't want to stand up here and talk to you for, for half an hour. So we wanted to kind of engage with the audience if you've got questions around um, the work that Ben's been doing or the work that we've been doing at Rank. So have a think if you've got questions. Um, so going back to that, I mean, you know, that's taken um, several years to get there, and I think the biggest focus that we've kind of, um, or the biggest amount of effort we've put in behind all of this is the business change. So we know technology isn't a problem. We know the data isn't the problem. Everyone here buys into this. You know, we're all here because we like this product, we get this industry, we get this space. Um, but it's very difficult to then go back to the office and tell your colleagues that and get them as excited about this as you. So what we're going to talk about is how we've gone through that business change and what some of the tips we've kind of uh, engaged um, through that. 
I think the biggest kind of thing is if you think about where we were three years ago, um, tag management didn't exist, web analytics didn't exist in the business. Um, and so when we started to introduce the concept of you know, getting more data on our behavioral um, activities on our site, it, it was very much seen as an afterthought. I became quite a nuisance to a lot of people. Of the data we did have, very little trust. People didn't see the value. Um, and so we've had to do quite a lot of retrofitting, and it hasn't always gone to plan. Um, and if you go forward today, um, we have probably the richest view of, um, or we're looking at the richest view of the omnichannel customer. We've got all that visibility of on how they engage in, in club and also online, and that's a really rich view of, of what our customers are doing with us. It's become absolutely critical for our reporting, for the key business projects. Um, it's, it's kind of sit, sitting in nicely with our transactional reporting, and people are understanding the concept of let's understand what customers are doing with transactions, but also let's understand what they're not doing, and that's where this data has become really valuable. And as Ben said, every project before it starts, we're engaged in, so that's a really big kind of win for us, so we don't kind of have to retrofit later on. And I think if you go back to the, the bees, you know, it really is about that. So we built the infrastructure, we've got the right team, and that spent, you know, it took a lot of time to get the right people. And that some of the team that are here today, you know, without them, this wouldn't be possible. We've got the right people building, governing, and creating. But also, there is a focus on what else can we do and how can we innovate and explore new things and take the team on the journey, the business on the journey. So there's five key things that I want you to kind of take away in terms of that change process that we went through. So reach, if in doubt, put a tag in. So if someone says to you, hey, Kerry, we're doing this new project. Do you think we need tag management in there? Absolutely, just chuck it in. It's one line of code. It's really easy. You just put it in, even if you don't think you need it. It's very simple. So that's been a number one for us. Just get it in there, because that's the first blocker. We've done a lot. We probably could have even done more about evangelizing. So how can we make sure everyone's aware of what the data is, what the data isn't? It's not replacing our you know, financial reporting, but it is giving us new insight into what the customers are doing and what they're not doing with our brand. And we've democratized the data, so we've really made an effort to make sure every time we're giving a bit of in information or insight out to the business, this data's in there, so people start to get used to it. And as a result of that evangelizing, people now kind of start to seek um, come to us and say, you know, can you tell me this information? So evangelizing is absolutely essential. And for each new data set, so we've constantly put new tags in and we're getting new data sets in. You know, again, you need to show that value out to the team. You need to tell people what new data we've got available. You've got to show the true value to that individual. So there is no point, um, you know, ramming down someone's throat if it just doesn't make any sense to them. So really focus on, we've got this new piece of data, I've made it really relevant to you, and here it is on a plate, and work with them to kind of extract the value that makes sense to them. Just remember, your value may not be their value. Um, build trust and credibility. I think it was mentioned quite a few times this morning. Um, this is something that Ben's done an awful lot of work with us, is Continue to reconcile the data. You're going to have to do it several times for the same people. It may get monotonous, but if you have a key KPI that is essential and you want people to build trust in your data, you've got to reconcile it against the business data that people gain trust in. And frustratingly, you may have to do this several times, but trust me, it's worth it. And then finally, um, find your Kardashian. So um, I'm, I'm not a Kardashian fan, I promise you, but um, I was trying to think about influencers, and I didn't want to talk about Firefest, but um, we spent a lot of time trying to get data in front of key stakeholders and senior leaders in the business. And about a year ago, we kind of took a different, different tact, going, they're not the people consuming and, and working with the information, they're the readers at the end of it. So actually, if you find the people who are the key decision makers, which you may not be, that may not be that obvious at the beginning of projects, work with them. So we spent a lot of time with um, the BAs, the IT PMO, um, the analysts to make sure they understand it because they're the ones that are going to put your requirements into a project or the people that are going to think about um, the data that is available through Telium for their next piece of analysis. Or they're the people that are going to be thinking about, ah, do we need to talk to Kerry's team for this new project that we're working on. So find those influences, and they won't be who you expect. It won't be the end user. It'll be the people that are supporting and driving their, um, their requirements. And then finally, um, 
bring in a partner I can't advocate enough. I mean, I'm, I'm on this stage because I need, Ben's here because I needed him because he's so embedded in, in the business. You know, having someone on site, um, having someone in our business day to day, very much part of the team, has been absolutely essential because having them there, they can really understand the business um, requirements, what we're trying to do, and it just means that they can be more proactive with us. When we brought 120 feet in, it was, the brief was, tell us what we don't know and every quarter tell us something else we don't know. That's what we're looking for. So Ben being in sight, embedded in our business, is able to do that for us. Um, and finally, I just think, you know, one thing I always kind of advocate for is, you know, don't worry if it doesn't work out first time. You know, I've done this talk a couple of times before, and, you know, I think people are aiming for this utopia, and it's all going to be magical. And what I don't want to stand up here and say is, oh, we're doing all this perfectly. But you've got to just trust and, and you've got to keep trying. It's persistent, you know, honey, as I say, honey and the bee colonies don't take her, don't come overnight. You've got to have a strong team, strong processes, strong governance, and continue and try to, to achieve that. Um, and that is it. So, as I say, we're, we're welcoming questions if anyone has any. Hi. And there's a mic coming. Hang on. So that's really cool that you're in bringing Wi-Fi data and kiosk data into audience or into the UDH. Um, are there any other kind of non-traditional data sources that you're looking at adding to that to build the whole 360-degree view? Uh, look, I think it's always got to be use case driven. Um, one thing I think we'd probably look to start doing is partnerships. Um, so second party data or, or um, data sharing opportunities there. What they might be, we don't know. Um, and again, any, you know, rank is constantly innova innovating. We're going through a large business transformation. And I think what's worked really well is if there is a piece of new capability, we're invited into the conversation at that early stage. So I don't know, but absolutely there will be new ones. Well, secondary question. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, so for, for gambling, um, where there's a high correlation between weather. Have you got it? That'd be great. Um, um, there's a high correlation. <laughs> <laughs> so weather is a big impact into the industry. So you think if it's a nice sunny day, you're not going to want to sit down and, and play blackjack on your laptop. So, um, you know, this week's batch has been quite um, positive for us. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, but so weather data is definitely something we'd look to do. So can we start to um, bring games up, up or push promotions when it is a bad week? Um, can we have you know some sport betting? However, hasn't, hasn't got that much, uh, hasn't got as much weather bias. So yeah, I mean, if it's there, we'll, we'll do something with it. I mean, we've got the luxury of a fairly um, open remit to try stuff out, and I think that's something we really value. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> quicker the better. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, here's a question. Thank, thank you so much. That is me here. Hello. Out and back. Oh, oh there sorry, you are. Sorry. sorry. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for the presentation. Great stuff. Uh, one question uh, regarding your event stream. Which is your core use case there? S sorry? What is your core use case uh, using event stream? Event stream. Um, it was purely for access to the raw, raw data for the data scientists, um, data science models. So, you know, they've spent a lot of time creating models for responsible gambling propensity and, and VIP propensity and churn propensity. Um, but what they're only basing that on is actual transactions. And so, if we get all the behavioural data, they can start to see a bigger picture of the customer um, to, to support their modelling. Um, so that's been the main use case, and it's all landing in the data lake, so then they can get on with the smart stuff that they do. Was there one over there? No. No. Oh, one here. How can brands utilize data and technology to help drive success in the enterprise? I think I think the focus we've already had it always had is technology is the enabler. You know, you've got to um, you've got to be customer centric. You've got to be focused on a customer need and a customer use case. But technology should make it easier and enable you to do that. So all we're trying to do here is gather more information. So when our colleagues come to us and say, 
I want to um, create better experiences for our customers. We know we have the information available to you to serve that, that team. Um, so it, it's very much just an enabler, and don't think of it, you know, I think we get caught up in what technology can and can't do. It should just be there to support the customer and what we're trying to do for the customer. How can you uh, best tie your uh, infrastructure deployment through Telium to your digital transformation goals? Um, it's kind of similar. Um, so, you know, we're going through a transformation, and Telium is actually being used to, um, um, again, create new data sources, new ways of looking at the customer, and also drive some of the ideas. So, you know, if we're, we're looking at um, doing a whole um, transformation project around customer experience, having a richer view of the customer is driving that initiative, as well as supporting some of our retail initiatives and our safer gambling initiatives. So, it, again, it's just the enabler that supports all those activities. Hi. Um, I wanted to just ask, you talked a lot about um, having the right people on the teams. Mm -hmm. So what do you actually do to align your teams to be more responsible to the customer? Um, I, th I think for rank, responsibility is, is fundamental to our business. You know, we've been around for, I think it's uh, 90 years or we're coming up to close to that. Um, sorry, no, 80. Um, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Um, so responsibility is quite key to rank. It's one of our core values. Um, and you know, we use the data and the capability we have to, to better manage and better target customers to avoid getting into problem gambling. Um, we've got a widely published um, a case study around um, how we're using this data and the data science models to um, promote safer gambling for, for those we think we might be at risk. Um, but responsibility is absolutely fundamental to rank. Uh, thanks, Ben and Kerry. It was a really uh, nice uh, talk. I have uh, one question regarding the, what well, you said basically that the single customer view is a bit outdated. Yeah. Um, but I, was, I guess you still try to achieve it somehow to, to combine the data from your web sources with the uh, stuff happening in the casinos. Could you elaborate a bit more how you, how you do that? What kind of identifier are you using if, if you do it? Um, I, it's, I can't hear entirely, but I think, I think it's about how do we, um, you know, going away from single customer view, how do we get as much information in there? I mean, I, I just, I guess the thing about the single customer view is I think we just need to get away from this concept of utopia, and it was talked about a bit this morning. So what we're trying to get to is how can we get as much information that is going to contribute to the customer view into Telium through the channels that need to use Telium, so marketing, display, CRM. You know, Telium is not our, in rank, it's not our transactional um, FD reporting. So we don't need all of that information in there. Um, so, so that's where we're moving some of the data into the data lake for configuration there. I think I just want to get away from this concept of this unattainable um, single customer view in one platform and one platform alone. We just very much focus on what information do we need from on-site market, on personalization, marketing, CRM, um, to support those channels in real time. And the rest sits in other places, and we support those projects as well. Hi. Hi there. Oh. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi. I was wondering if um, you do integrate your events data uh, into your data warehouse. Any challenges you faced and how you overcome those? I'll let Ben answer that one. Uh, <laughs> yes, there's a lot of data. Um, the JSON that gets pulled out of the event stream is uh, huge. So the, the real challenge was kind of filtering that down. So it's the payoff between we want as much data as we can get, um, re as much relevant data, but at the same time, do we want every single field? So we had, we've, we're in the middle at the moment of some long conversations about which fields we want, which fields we don't want. Then you've got the whole technical fun of pulling JSON files, mangling those and getting them into databases, which our uh, database architect is, is working on at the moment. Um, but in terms of the, the framework, it's all, it's all pretty simple, really. The, uh, the files get written every 15 minutes into S3, and then we've just got something that pulls them down and mangles them about and does stuff. That's, that's not the technical term. <laughs> I've got time for about one or two more questions, if there are any more. There's one in the middle there.
So just a quick one around um, mobile apps and how you uh, integrate kind of Telium within that. Yeah. Obviously, mobile users are a fairly impulsive. Uh, if something starts to go wrong in terms of their own gameplay, they'll fairly quickly close the app. How are you using Telium to keep that, I guess, in-app retention? Um, if, I'm all, if I'm honest, when I said we're doing all of this in a sense, but not all perfectly. I think apps the biggest challenge for us right now. So we have a lot of data in there, but we're still going through the, the trust phase with the app data, um, trying to reconcile all the points. Um, I think at this stage, we're just trying to understand what um, drop-off points are in the app so we can in use that data to inform the strategy. And it's been a little bit of a blocker. Um, you know, so we're not, um, we're not u actively using it for retention. Um, but what we need to use it for is to understand the problem first, and that's been um, that's most important. You know, I was just being um, emailed to another project yesterday, and you know, all these whimsical ideas of let's change things because it's what we think. We're really focused on let's get the data, let's understand it, and then decide what to do. So when we get to um, a trustworthy place with our app data. Um, it will be used to kind of inform, do we need to change our app strategy? Do we need to change the design of them? Do we need to change how we interact with customers? Um, Omnichannel targeting through web and in-app in as well. Um, so it will all come. But also on, on that point, one of the, the outcomes of all the reconciliation we've done, uh, because the app data was a bit flaky in places, I've actually been in and been looking at um, event, le event stream level stuff. And like you say, some of the patterns are crazy and going back to the the presentation this morning about how to visualize it there's some really rich stuff in there that we can pull some insights out of of people who are uh, deposit play a game close the app and then 30 seconds later open the app and then get to the point of deposit and then close the app and then go away and come back 10 minutes later and then complete the deposit and there are a lot of very odd behavioral things that we need to di to dig deeper into um, which we haven't had a chance to do yet but um, that's kind of seeing those and getting the insight around those comes as a byproduct of doing that reconciliation piece um, that we had on step four. I think that's all we've got time for, but thank you um, so much for your attention and uh, I hope you enjoyed the little uh, bee education as well. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.